arrived on scene, and uh, all of us are giving him lots of um, some kind of activity by the LAPD. On that's the true. Now we've got another fire north of us here, and uh, what, what we can do is I'll just turn right to the north here, and this looks like a pretty big fire. It's one that major intersection north of this one, and as I come around, I think you'll be able to pick it up. Let me get down just a. Let me get down just a little bit lower here and you'll be able to see this thing burn. Actually, Paul, we're gonna move in here nice and slow. We've got a couple other helicopters with us and That's we'll take a look at it. You can see that this thing is just really involved. Now That's we've got units from the fire watch. department that are just arriving in front of it. If Dave will pull back just a little bit, you'll be able to see the fire truck, the ladder truck coming. I see another engine behind it and I see some uh, paramedic truck, it looks like. Now also right behind those, I see uh, about seven LAPD police cars, if we pan just a little bit to the left, uh, Dan, uh, Dave, I'm sorry, you'll see a whole line of police cars that have their uh, red lights on, and it looks like they're setting up, or at least blocking the street at that point. Mm -hmm. And what they could be doing is just making sure that the firemen can uh, fight that fire safely. That's exactly what they're doing. That fire is really going, even as you got there, we could see it just, just take off into the roof and and uh, launch itself on this building. That is a good burn that's going this on. The fire department is doing uh, a real good job at this point from that uh, fire, meaning that uh, they're doing the thing, they're doing good on fighting that. Putting there now, please. Okay, it's pretty much of, much of the same, Michael. The crowd is right up next to the police. They still got that line of police in riot gear. Um, they, the crowd has not uh, tried to push them back at all. At one point earlier to one black person in the jury, and that's why they came with that vote. Okay, what do you think, man? I think it's very unfair that happened, but we got to remember to keep the peace, you guys. There's other things that we can do. We got to stop the violence. Now to Chopper 2. Chopper 2 for an overview of uh, the fires burning there. Now, what boulevard is that? Mark, are you in Chopper 2? Can you uh, yes, Mike, tell us again if we're looking uh, at the Vermont, same scene or a new one? It's Vermont, just, uh, just north of uh, Manchester. All right. Uh, have you seen fire units responding to these various blazes? We've counted half a dozen along there. Do you see fire units fighting these fires? Uh, negative, Michael. Or else. Um, as far as you know, the police still have not decided to go, go into those neighborhoods. Is that correct? As far as I know, that's correct. I, I haven't heard anything different. Uh, maybe uh, when by the time you come back to this again, we can check in with the uh, PD helicopter and maybe find out what the situation is. Tonight when we were wondering uh, where the LAPD was deciding and how it was deciding to make its presence known, um, we had been told uh, by Lieutenant Duncan of the LAPD, which means everyone who's off the clock or on vacation is called back to be deployed when necessary. Bree, we see uh, some uh, somebody with a fire there. That's outside Parker Center. Yeah. Jody, what's happened? Okay, Mark, Michael, things have escalated dramatically in the last 15 minutes. That is the third flag that you are looking at. They have burned. The crowd is now starting to charge not only Parker Center, but they are starting to uh, break out into fights amongst the e there and there were no cameras on. They had, like I said, burned some flags. Brian, can we get that over there? There are a few people, though, Bree, that are playing to the cameras, but overall, I think people are kind of caught up in their own friends. Oh, and I think they've given the order to charge here because I see them coming forward. They, they uh, appear it, to be retreating, retreating, Jody. From now our they're, vantage point. Pardon me? From our vantage point, it appears they're retreating. You say they're they're starting to, to surge forward again, the police officers? Yeah, there's a small group that I'm looking at, Michael. Okay, I see well, our shot oh, isn't yeah. telling us that. We have a different shot, Jody, Okay. Um, than, than what you're describing. Okay. That's okay. You've okay, got a now, much wider scene than we do. Right. Uh, all right, now they're stopping. They're, like, holding the line again. There's a group of officers, officers standing shoulder to shoulder. They've just got their uh, something thrown at their face mask. I don't know if you can see that. I'm not sure because I don't have a monitor with me. Um, now they're surging. The crowd is surging toward the officers once again. They have helmets. They have visors in front of their face, but their arms and their shoulders are exposed. Their legs and their feet are exposed. Yes, Can you tell us what's being thrown at them? We sometimes it, see objects being lobbed at them that look as yeah, big as baseballs. Yeah, it looks like, looks like baseballs or tennis balls, uh -huh. or and some of it uh, is wadded up paper from the signs that the uh, demonstrators were uh, carrying. In fact, some of them are just slinging those signs right at, there you go. Addressed earlier this afternoon the isolated incidents of violence that he expected and now have come to fruition, calling the people perpetrating such acts thugs. Let me look, expand on that a little bit, Bree. Uh, Reiner was, uh, has seen the same hooliganism that uh, 
Our uh, other viewers have seen earlier, he couldn't contain his disgust tonight. He said this, I'm quoting here, these people are thugs. That has to be understood, he said. Quote, okay. to bash someone's head in to go over and spit on them while they're possibly Here's dying. The These are thugs. Over. Now the parking, uh, the parking booth has gone over. Yes, they just uh, tipped it over, Bree. It's not on fire inside, is it, Jody? The last thing we saw before the, the, the they threw a burning flag. Fell over. Yeah, they do, threw a burning flag through one of the broken windows, and now they're up on top of it, uh, jumping, jumping up. Everybody who is off the clock, everybody who's on vacation in the LAPD officer, they are all called back to be deployed wherever, whenever necessary. This is according to Lieutenant Duncan of the LAPD. For shop. And uh, we were going to set up a signal there. Uh, the uh, people uh, from the shop at that time came out and told us, just get out of this area. We heard, we heard several shots fired, and uh, we just... A, a good view of just how I, big that okay, thing was. Okay, Mike, I don't know where this rock came from. It was just sitting on my side. I was on the passenger side. Uh, this isn't the rock that hit the photographer's knee. Uh, this came through somewhere. S several rocks were thrown. I understand the frustration you must feel at this particular time. It seemed to me the officers may have been saying, turn off the lights. Were they saying, turn off the lights? No, they no. They were telling us to get back, and we started to move back. And then he uh, grabbed onto the microphone cord and just, uh, you know, yanked it out of my. It's very hard, Jody. Um, particularly when when you're in the field, it's it's very hard to to back off and say, okay, I'll I'll just relax a little bit on on my job. You are a wonderful reporter, and we're glad that you're there covering this. Um, watch out for you. Talk to him. No, he's, he doesn't hear me. I was going to try to get a comment from him if I could. They just look like they're taking uh, one woman off the oh. right. They just started a fire in front of it, but now that, like Bree said, is the Hall of Justice of the building right behind it. Uh, I don't know if that's a parking structure structure or not. I can't see that far, but uh, that's where the fire seems we to be We see officers up. in this videotape. An officer just came out of that building, gun dr uh, his gun drawn, his pistol drawn. Yes. And this videotape was shot less than 10 minutes ago, right? And there you see people uh, taunting. I, I can't tell. This is the federal building. We assume those are federal officers. The Hall of Justice. Oh. And we are seeing now that they're throwing something at the officers. Can't tell exactly what. Jody, what was it they were throwing? Can you hear us? I'm sorry, Bree. Could you repeat that? Yes. In the videotape, we see some of the uh, people in the crowd throwing things at the officers. And swinging at them as well. Yeah. Uh, there was a, a young woman there who, who took a swing at, uh, at an officer with uh, some object in her hand. And someone's trying to uh, calm them down right now. See, oh, now they got the arms up. They're going to make... Did they make any arrests? Yes, they made several arrests. In fact, they marched them past us. This is the latest stuff that was shot by the, uh, the CBS crew that has been roving down there. And they said that they have hit every single building in the downtown area. Hit every building uh, with... Uh... Bottles. Um, some of them have tried to start fires, but at least shattering any glass windows that they came upon. Picking out windows and passing cars. Police responded. They had arrested one man. They cleared the area. Then there was a report of an officer needing assistance. Officers returned to the area. They had just left and found this. This is at the, look, at the corner of Vermont and Manchester, a, uh, a business district. The stores, as you see, have been looted. Ma'am, tell me what happened here. Oh. Were you inside when this happened? Both those stores seem to have been owned by Asians, I believe Koreans. These, this gentleman and his sister, that's her uh, there, uh, sister-in-law, I should say, were in a car at the corner of Florence and Normandy when they were, uh, when they were attacked, they say. Now, we're back behind the 77th Division Station. A car has just rolled up with an injured man inside. This is the gentleman I told you about earlier who we think was shot, or, but we're not sure. That was his mother-in-law. This is looting, sporadic looting throughout Martin Luther King and Maine. And this is around the corner on Maine. They're letting the fires burn. The police were doing essentially the same thing. There are some areas where the police have responded immediately, calmed the situation, dispersed the crowd, Sometimes the police are back. Thank you so much, Mary. Uh, fewer demonstrators. The demonstrators are on the run. The police officers are moving out at a good clip. And the demonstrators are moving on Olive Avenue right now. The demonstrators are pretty much scattered. The police are still on the move, and they have uh, stopped up short. The bottle just uh, hit the pavement and broke. The police officers are now lining up in riot uh, in a uh, formation, uh, shoulder to shoulder. Fire Chief Donald Manning alluded to the fact that uh, that things seem to be uh, getting better, perhaps, or at least uh, moderating. I'm not sure that that is the case. Is that a stop? In the street, and then 
they stole me and they started to throw rock rocks. They pulled to my car, pulled to my car, they said, give me all your money you have. And they steal my money and they started to hit me. They started to hit you? Hit me. What were and they I doing? started to defend the body, but a lot of people, a lot of people hit me, not only one or not people, and they were dropping something acid in my face, they and my body, acid they tried to burn me, put the matches on me, and uh, one preacher saved me, the black preacher. Uh, he actually, this pastor actually threw himself on top of you, didn't he, to, to shield you, is that right? Oh. The, the pastor, the preacher. The pastor, he he stopped today. People hit me, and and, and when they leave me the floor like a diamond, he took me to the, his car. I don't remember nothing because I lost my my mind. And and sent home to stay with relatives. You look like you might need to get back to the hospital. Are you uh, going to be taken? They have back? a lot of people there. A lot of people there, and they say this. I I feeling good to go home. And I say yes. I go. We're home. coming through. Uh, police are doing their best to uh, try to keep people at a safe distance. Uh, police officers as well as the CHP have been in and out of this particular neighborhood uh, for the past uh, half hour, are, are preoccupied right now. So they can't do anything about this particular blaze. But uh, looking at its intensity, I would say it's going to spread to the adjacent buildings very quickly. Again, uh, your location is uh, 8 and fire yet. Uh, any fire personnel? No fire personnel. Now this gentleman is driving by and... Uh, Sir, tell me what you tell me what you are, are are doing here at this particular point. You know, uh, uh, authorities are saying that people should stay out of this area. Oh, uh, uh, what I'm doing, I'm just passing through, looking at all the uh, destruction around here and picking up whatever I can get. You know, because uh, it seems like to me everybody's on their own right now. Yeah, you think there's any chance at all that people's emotions and nerves will calm down enough so that these fires are going to stop? I don't think so. I don't think so. Deserved, not not, I mean, you know, uh, our black community, you know, is, is, is being destroyed by the, the whites, you know. I mean, we gotta, we gotta have, we gotta have justice around. Being here. escorted into a sheriff's department, <coughs> a bit to the left, a store which is now a total law. There was enough law enforcement to grab virtually all of the number of people. Taught. It's getting very tense here. Uh, Harvey, we're suggesting that you get out of there. Yeah, actually, Trisha, the problem right now. is we can't get. We're, we're sort of um, trapped. That's pandemonium. People are just running through the streets crazily, and these people are very tense and very angry. They are actually walking by, running by us with cardboard boxes full of anything they can get their hands on. Uh, this has been going on for the last, I'd say, about 20 minutes. We saw a sheriff's uh, cruiser go by. They didn't stop. Then we saw two fire engines go by. They didn't. Uh, we may be fairly new in learning how to uh, handle this situation. Uh, most of us have not been in this uh, type of a situation, a riot uh, with looting before. So uh, this is a learning curve for us along with everyone else. Here. Uh, yes, and, it is, and, and it seems to me, uh, uh, Pat, that the key here is that when, enter, when any of our crews go into a situation like this and we want to do the best we can to show people at home the pictures of what is happening now. On particular stores, but not arrest anybody, even though they see very clearly that they have been looting. I, I think it's safe to say that they know everything that's going on. Uh, number one, they're spread thin, but number two, again, uh, why cause any situation to sort of scare them a bit, knowing that they can't stop and arrest everybody. Maybe they just run through the streets uh, with their sirens going. They, they figure maybe that'll just put a little bit of scare into these people, but these people are not stopping. Let me just die down. This is a, a, a very eerie sight in some ways because it looks as though traffic is proceeding normally that this is a normal day in any community. quickly if we can take a live shot real fast you can see the remnants of uh, of the store from a distance if you want to take a live shot real quickly we're going to stick with the tape that's the, oh, there you that's go. the right. plume of smoke let's go back to the tape look now this is a man who was arrested for uh, looting a store across the street the deputy saw these people um, literally inside of the store and they began making, they, they huffed them, and this is where they started making their or thicker, and then you're going to, you're, you may be able to actually hear the shots ring out. I'm going to stop talking and see if we can hear this. Break down. I believe. Okay, Harvey? Yes. Okay, I believe right now. You can, uh, yeah, that's when people are starting to crouch behind the cars, and this is... Gunfire! It just happened. Don't worry about 
that now. That's my arm. We're behind that police car. The officer is still in the process of arresting another man. There's an officer with a gun drawn, continuing to make his arrest even though there was gunfire nearby. They're trying to get... The, the police, while in large numbers... Now, here's one of the fellows who's been looting. They just stand around and tell everybody to clear out and then let everybody clear out. They leave and everybody go back in. So who's in control of this neighborhood? I am. We are. 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 This is a gentleman who's trying to bring peace in there. Peace about it right there, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, people hating one another. We ain't proving nothing. Where we gonna go if we want something to eat tomorrow? Where we gonna go if our kids need some milk or something? We ain't doing nothing. We hurt ourselves. We hurt ourselves. Jesus love all y'all. If y'all love him, y'all with him. All right. Now what happened there, I'm sorry you cut away from it, what happened there was that the police uh, held the people back for a short time. Is, is tell them about peace, about are a better way. Are people listening to you? Yes, right people right are, right are, you, are you guys listening to him? Is he making I'm listening to him. Hey, they're being wrong. You know where he ain't been guilty? He just been guilty. He's supposed to be guilty. It's two left feet, man. Two right feet. I know what we're talking about. You know, they didn't have a liquor store and shit. They didn't have a liquor store. What are we doing? What are we doing? I'm not even talking about that. Let's go. At 58th and Vermont. It's typical of scenes throughout this part of Los Angeles. Into the store, you see him coming out now. So, the picture in this part of Los Angeles is that when the crowd wants something, <clears throat> if there's enough of them, they go. And uh, here, you know, a totally defenseless person here, uh, no one that's to help right. him. Um, this is attempted murder. Well, yeah, that's pretty much what it is, and. Um, no one here to help him, and people who continued to come up as he tried to get back into his truck, he was eventually, even with severe head injuries, was able to get back into that truck and drive off, um, although he did it very slowly and, of course, was in the hospital directly after that with serious head injury, uh, extremely uh, high. It's going to go up uh, geometrically. Uh, you begin to wonder where they're going to put all these. For instance, when they have... Uh, when they decide to sweep an area for drunk driving, for instance, they have these mobile uh, booking Fedco site. Uh, tell us what's going on there now. Well, it appears now that the Fedco store itself is on fire. It's been uh, looted at all. Uh, now it seems that they are they are arriving. Uh, the store seems to be clearing out. To stay on the clock, but everywhere in South Central there is a fireman. There is also a police officer. Sergeant, how long have you been out here? Uh, we've been here since six this morning. And uh, how long uh, have you been at this particular fire? A little over two hours. Now, the drill is that you're on your motorcycle, and wherever the firemen go, you also go. Usually, this particular call, it was a backup uh, for the firefighters, a help call, rather. They were taking rocks and bombs. Over their heads, and they asked them to lie down on the ground. They're still telling us to keep down because they don't know what kind of guns they have, what kind of fire they have. Now they're on the ground, out of the van. Uh, the firing has stopped, but this uh, policeman just arrived, and he's not sure what's going to happen. Uh, that gun is cocked before it came uh, out of the car. There's one more car, uh, one more police officer comes with his gun in hand. Uh, they were not taking any chances with this. Uh, there had been shots fired, everybody heard the shots fired, and they didn't know who these people were. That is the atmosphere that you can have right on Vermont. Now, this is a good neighborhood. It's just a uh, half a block from a, a department store. It's a half a block from two grocery stores. Uh, it is in a relatively good neighborhood. They're looking into the van. They don't know whether there's a fourth man inside at this point. Uh, it turns out that there isn't, uh, finally. And finally, they are handcuffed and concerned about uh, being identified, being seen, doing this sort of thing. Uh, and they just carried out as much as they could, as quickly as they could. And they continue that on for about 10 or 15 minutes. There was simply no police officers in view. Finally, you will see a patrol car. This woman dropped half of her. Now we're going to be going into the smoke. We're going to dive on down. I hope my signal holds. Okay, I'm looking. Out of control. We have a five-story building burning out of control. No fire department present. Just west of downtown Los Angeles. West. Point downward, Marika. What you're looking at is essentially... 4th, 5th, 6th Street, Olympic Boulevard, Alvarado, Blaine, Bixel, the area just west of downtown Los Angeles. And you'll see a single story commercial structure burning out of control. Torched, no fire department present. 
the front of the building completely looted. You can see the debris in the street. Now we're going to be making a right turn. I hope our, I guess our picture is holding. Yes, Bob, everything is fine. Uh, we're just listening to you as you're showing us these incredible pictures uh, over uh, okay. the, the west side of downtown. Now, Ross, we're coming up on an area, uh, it's an Alvarado roof, that is trying to put water up on her roof because she's worried because being so in such close proximity to this uh, mini mall that the structure next door will catch fire and then her apartment house, four-story apartment house, is going to... Be safe. Despite all this, I think I can make it home. But I've just been dismissed from work. But kids were just... Kids yes. were just running down the street in, in one house? Yes, they're boys and they were walking by here and they saw a white lady who was leaving for work and they were protesting. And another photo I just saw about an hour ago shows a Molotov cocktail in mid-flight about a foot from a guy's head. It strikes the guy and sets his car and fling away TV sets, stereos, and other electronics equipment. And uh, even as the officers were moving towards them, uh, they continued to talk. It looks and appears to me that the area has been pretty much uh, cleared and uh, allowing the fire crews to move in now and put out some of the fires that you've seen all up and down this stretch of Santa Monica Boulevard. Is this... Is this, tape full, is this is this tape full sound? We can hear. You yes. yell, you bastard! And you call it black power? You may have to fight that. Why did you join my business? Why did you join my truck? Why see my computer? I'm trying to make it. Could you understand that? Can y'all see it? I'm trying to make it. Who runs one of these businesses? Here, uh, keep the peace. This was early in the day. Uh, as police moved in, riders uh, kept on coming and chased them out. This scene is where we saw a journalist, a French journalist, who was here doing a story. He was mobbed by these uh, he is. these guys. And uh, we were passing by on the street. Uh, I saw this, and I, I just couldn't pass by. Went over to uh, try to stop these guys from uh, from mauling this gentleman, and they took his camera equipment. Uh, I told him he was lucky to uh, get away with his life. But stable condition on life support systems. Right. His friends and co-workers at an Azusa trucking company today were saddened and outraged, as we all were when we saw that video. Uh, he is being treated at Daniel Freeman Hospital. His family today was too distraught to issuance of the destruction and violence now plaguing our streets and uh, still spreading. What you guys are seeing is the poor people of Los Angeles speaking the voice of the poor people all across America. We got no jobs. You wonder why you got families looting? Because their kids haven't eaten. Why are the young people looting? Because they got no future. They got nothing else. You haven't given us any choices. You haven't given us anything. And you sit back on your TV so surprised that we tear up our neighborhoods. Yeah, we know we live here. Yeah, we know we shop here. I like these stores. But the bottom line is, this is something that you guys have been ignoring for so long and today today is payday it's payday ignorance because you're only gonna it's not ignorance no what do you do are you got, you have a job you no have a job? i don't have a job and you should be out there getting we've got some pretty angry residents here uh, ross who are very upset about the fact that the fire department has not shown up yet uh, yeah, well that's that's certainly understandable i mean if your house is burning or your neighbor's house or your neighborhood is burning you will be upset if the fire department that, Get there, That's but right. it's awful uh, easy to understand why, in many cases, the fire department cannot get to all of these men. I've been out since '88. This is not Beirut, this is not Lebanon, but Beirut is about the best way some could describe it. It's good to see him in the area. Uh, it looks kind of like we're in a war zone now. <laughs> um, they won the battle, but they haven't won the war. I'm, I'm neutral, I love every I love people of color, you know. I'm, I'm not a not like they picking me out, picking me out to be. Uh, after all, I mean, I can understand the, the the first upset for the first two hours after the verdict, but uh, to go on, to keep going on like like this, and to see the security guard shot on the on the ground, it um, it's it's uh, it's just not right. It's just not right because those people are, are will never go home.
to to their family and get along. We just gotta just gotta you know, I mean we're all stuck here for a while. Let's you know, let's 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 try to work it out. Let's try to beat it, you know. Let's try and work it out. <laughs> Are you no. satisfied? Yeah. Although I couldn't get my mother in there Just, at um, the same address. I've got to try to find an office that has to have food stamps. Then I've got to find a place where I can cash my check because I had my ID stolen and I can't, you know, I've only got Nick, Nick's check cashing place. I don't even know where this one opened. The buses aren't running, so I have to do it on foot with the baby in the The lines grew longer. And by closing time, by 2 o'clock, the post offices were forced to extend their if they had one coming. Police maintained order, and they even provided water for the crowds after a few people passed out from the heat. Put at $550 million. Cities across the country are putting down... <laughs> In New York City tonight, a band of about 1,000 demonstrators broke off from a peaceful march. In San Francisco, protesters held rallies and lit bonfires, but the demonstrations turned ugly. Police arrested more than 1,500 people in and around the Bay Area. Up the coast in Seattle, mobs vented their anger on cars. They overturned some, and burned up. Shop owners cleaned up the Vegas. Mobs roamed a neighborhood about five miles from the strip, shooting guns and setting fires. The body of a young person, believed to be about 13 years old, was found this morning in a burned out store. Police arrested at least two college students after a campus disturbance. Earlier, bands of students hurled chunks of bricks at the officers who returned tear gas as well as the world reacts to L.A.'s racial unrest. In Berlin, demonstrators in a violent May Day protest showed their support for protesters here in L.A. Leftist demonstrators turned on a group of neo-Nazis. When police moved in, things got ugly. And in Japan, the riots have been the top story on Japanese television. Photographs from riot-ravaged L.A. are all over the front pages of Japanese newspapers. Shot and wounded two officers. Uh, we had a uh, suspect back in the lot with what appears to be an AK-47. Uh, he opened up on the officers. They were both uh, injured uh, in the gunfire. And by the way, one officer wounded in the rioting was Michael Strawberry, the brother of Los Angeles Dodger Daryl Strawberry. Into the streets and cleaning up neighborhoods or spending hours in line at the post office. To restore order, the president sends 4,500 federal... To restore order. Y'all, get along. Fort Ord soldiers. If we can roll some tape, I'll tell you that these men are waiting on standby alert, waiting for word from the president when they can go into L.A. Now, we should say there is the chance that they won't have to be deployed at all, and when I talk to some of these men, they're hoping they don't have to go in. Now, for hours, trucks and troops have been rolling in here, a very similar picture to the one we saw during Operation Desert Storm, and we should say that many of these... These men took part in the Battle of Desert Storm. ...was hit, uh, and as he was hit, the car crashed under the Harbor Freeway. That suspect you see there in the street, he died. Three others ran from the scene. One of the other suspects was finally arrested. Two others got away, and uh, police blocked off uh, the 110 freeway and the whole area. And uh, uh, what happened in that case is uh, uh, they're still looking for the suspects. Police officers, none of the police officers were in. Uh, but uh, the other incident we're talking about, uh, not this particular videotape, happened in South Central Los Angeles. Daryl Strawberry. The suspected sniper didn't get too far. Other officers spotted the suspect. They shot him. A bullet hit the suspect in the head, but that wound, we are told, is not life-threatening. Laughed about it the whole time. But the look, they kicked him, hurled large objects at him, laughed about it the whole time. But the look at this with all of the turmoil. It's kind of hard to see, but the trucker also had been shot at. Here now, slow-motion footage. Luckily, another band of good Samaritans, all black, came to get Denny to help in taking him out of there.